podcast. Uh, my name is Ida. I'm a Swedish expat living in Vienna in Austria and this is my podcast Knitting on my mind. You can also find me on Instagram under Knitting on my mind, on uh, Ravelry under Knitting on my mind where I have an, an account and on uh, Facebook I also have a Knitting on my mind account but I I'm not very um, active on on, um, on Facebook, so um, Instagram is where you find most of my postings about what I knit and what I do in life. I live with my family in Vienna, Austria uh, since 18 years when we moved here from Sweden with our three little kids. Our three little kids are now grown-ups, two have returned to Sweden and one is living with us here. And I am a kindergarten teacher at the Swedish School of Vienna here. Uh, and my, in my free time, my hobby is crafting. And uh, the majority of the time I knit when I craft. I also like sewing, a little bit of crocheting, and I'm challenging myself with a little embroidery this year. But I will talk to, about that with you at the end today. Today, I want to talk to you about what I am wearing. Then I'm going to talk about what I have been knitting on since I saw you three weeks ago. I've done some progress on my, um, on my um, projects. Uh, and I will also give you a little bit of an insight from the Sy och Handwerks Festivalen, which is a an, um, sewing and a crafting festival that I went to in Sweden last week. And some of the things that I got there, some books that I bought and some yarn. And I will also share with you um, the beautiful package I got from my uh, fiber share um, friend who lives in Germany. And at the end, I will talk a little bit about the challenge, challenge I'm, I'm putting up for myself. So you're very welcome to come along. Cheers. I'm having coffee, coffee today out of my Marius mug. Marius is a typical Norwegian pattern that you can find on uh, sweaters, on mittens, on hats and on socks. And of course I had to show you that this one. It's one of my favorite mugs. I usually drink green tea in the morning, coffee during the day and black tea in the afternoon and in the evening. Uh, and I really like the ones that are flavored with with fruit and and berries and as I, the black teas and the green teas and as I can't really get them here I, I buy them in Sweden and bring them with me when I'm when I'm there so let's start with what am I wearing I am wearing a shawl out of a book called Sticka Flätor by Ivar Asplund. Uh, I bought this book about a year ago, I think, when it just came out in Sweden. Ivar Asplund is a fantastic knitter. He does incredible color work and he also have come up with really interesting and challenging, uh, but also easy patterns for this book for knitting with um, cab cables. The pattern that I, I have done is called Shawl, Shawl, Trefall. So it's, a, it's a, actually consists out of three different um, parts that you can see. It's almost a square with a triangle there to, to put in the front. And I knitted it out of Madeleine Tosh, um, Tosh DK. And the color was log wood. Oh, if I put it upside down, there we go. And I did not knit, <laughs> I did not um, alternate my skeins as you can see. So I, here you can really see how different, even though it's the same colorway, how different the different um, skeins can be. So I decided, okay, I will make it three colors then. And I added 
at the bottom a combination of lang mohair looks and um, Amano yarns, which is a, a Peru, Peruvian uh, baby alpaca and, and silk combination. And the lang was a mohair looks. Uh, I can show you the back, what it looks like. Just stand up a little bit. You can see there is like a square almost on the back. And it's really nice and warm. Keeps me warm <laughs> right now. Um, here in the front you can see the, the cables. And there are also cables mm, between the three parts that it's made out of. But you can really see here what a difference it is. But um, I'm okay with that. It was not meant to be like that, but it turned out. That's the way it is, you know, sometimes with knitting. Things just happen and you have to either unravel and it over or you just accept accept it and this time I kind of accepted it this book also has some other really interesting patterns I am planning on making one of the sweaters it's called Shenet Bedral it's also a really nice cabled pattern and I saw it when, when um, in this color mm -hmm. let's see where is the color there is it it has a really smart solution up here uh, with i-cord bind up that I want to try and the book also con contains nice hats, for example, this one. And I have already made those wrist warmers called Canon. They're really sweet and easy. They are um, really easy cable patterns. This is also a fun, fun hat called Sniskan that he has come up with. So it's called Sticker Flata by Ivar Asplund. And as a matter of fact, I know that the, it's going to be published in English in September. Oops. My color is all strange. It's going to be published in English uh, in September by a publishing company called Trafalgar Square Books uh, and um, it's called in English it's going to be called Cable Knits from Nordic Lands and this is what it's going to look like I know it's mirrored but I hope it, lo it looks the same as the Swedish ver version Cable Knits from Nordic Lands and I highly recommend this book if you want to try uh, patterns with cables. There are easy uh, patterns that are uh, for everyone and then there are also a couple of a little bit more challenging maybe depending on your level of, of knitting. But I recommend it and Ivor is a fantastic knitter. Yes, so <clears throat> I forgot to say that I changed the pattern a little bit. I didn't do the... there was two parts of of um, patterns here but I only did knit stitches because I really like this pattern that the ridges make it's so squishy especially with this Madeleine Tosh yarn so that was my sw uh, shawl that I am wearing right now uh, now I'm going to tell you what I have been knitting on uh, last time I talked to you about my love of um, Icelandic yarn and I had a nice Lanik yarn um, jacket on 
that I showed you and I also talked about the sweaters that I'm making for my husband at the moment. Well, I have been knitting on the sweater for my husband and I'm going to show you how far I've come. I'm keeping it in this bag still. My um, the bag that I've made with different uh, materials from, for example, Liberty of London and uh, Laura Ashley and other patchwork colors and this is from Pearl Soho in London but as you see the sweater is going along and it's not gonna fit in the in the bag for a very long time the pattern I'm knitting is called Asymptote and it's out of a book by Lars Reims called Modern Lopi and on the cover of the book is actually the, the sweater that I'm making. Uh, this one, it is in Let Lopi, and this one you can see is uh, different green colors and gray, but I persuaded my husband that he should use gray because he's not a very gray person, he says. But we also he also got to pick out uh, the colors, and the colors that we have picked out for this is here you can see the band of Let Lopi, the Icelandic um, yarn. And I have a dark brown, a beige, the red, and the gray is the main color. So this is the color palette that we're using for his sweater. It's on 5.5 millimeter needles and last time everything was in parts I had two arms and I had the body finished and since then I have put everything on one long needle Oops. and now I am starting with the yoke I have actually started with the yoke because the yoke started starts with uh, nine rows of on the gray I put my um, stitches from the body on one stitch holder and the stitches from the arm on one stitch holder and the marker says this to mark the, the middle here I have some other stitch holders a blue and a pink one they are a little bit smaller and these stitches are then going to be kitchen kitchener stitched together is this called kitchen i think it is called kitchener stitch uh yes i have tried it on my husband several times to check that um that it will be hopefully large enough. He's a little bit skeptical. He said, oh, it's only down to here. Yeah, I said, but now we are, now I'm making the yoke, so I hope it will fit him. So, dear sweater, you gotta go back into the bag, and I really hope to have some more to show you next week no not next week in two weeks or three weeks or something I always keep my patterns when I make color work I have this really smart little stand with a dollar horse on it um, now I don't want to show you the pattern because that would be to give kudos um, um, and you can you can go up the pattern one row at a time so you know exactly where you are in the color work that's really handy it's magnets this is magnets that was the sweater you can see next time it's not going to fit So that was the sweater. I have also worked on 
the baby uh, jacket for my for the baby of my nephew, which is out of this book, Baby Stickling for Stickletrian. It's a really plain uh, pattern, but I really like plain patterns because they're very useful. You can also use them maybe for the next baby if you have more children and I'm making this one. I am knitting it out of Lang yarns, I think. Yes, so Lang Merino 150. Uh, it is 150 meters for 50 grams. It's very sweet, uh, very soft. And when I was in Sweden, I finished the body. I didn't have the needles to I needed a smaller needle to to pick up the resting needles for the arms and I didn't have that with me so it had to rest a little bit but now I'm on to the first arm here had to decrease every two centimeters which is approximately every eight row and then it's only the second sleeve and the buttons down and then little Leo can have his sweater although Leo is only one month old and this is size one year so I think he will have to wait a little bit I have picked out some of my buttons for my buttons mm -hmm. let's see oops here we go this is the button I'm going to use and I am going to sew it in with this yarn to make it a little bit interesting. I don't know if I showed you that last, year, the last week, last time, which was three weeks ago. So that was the baby sweater and I was hoping I was going to be able to show you some finished socks today, but I haven't. I haven't finished them. They are very close to be finished. And needles in the needle cozy and finished the legs and the heels, which is a heel flap and gusset, also when I was in Sweden. And then I just kept on knitting with the main color. I decided not to make stripes on the feet because it was such a good traveling knit uh, during the time when I was in Sweden because I also traveled by train and and bus and so on so it was nice to have a knit really mindless knit just to go on for the socks I'm knitting them on Chia goes three no two and a half uh, and I love I love Chia goes they're my favorite favorite knitting needles and uh, Magic Loop is my favorite way of knitting socks. I was going to talk to you about why I haven't done the toes yet. That is because I want to, maybe want to try to find an alternative favorite toe. My, the heel, heel flap and gusset heel is actually my favorite. Um, make it heel here down which is um, with actually um, it's reinforced because you um, you knit and then you um, you just uh, slip a, a stitch on the right side and on the back side you just purl back so it's, it makes an almost double material when you make the little heel flap here and the gusset. And I actually like this one because you also get a larger instep in the socks. And uh, I usually do... Um, my, my toes are usually that I take in on each side and have maybe one or two stitches in between 
so like a almost like a midterm but I would like to find an alternative and I'm gonna do that until next time I see you and then I'm gonna talk about that in, in the next episode and the yarn I forgot to t mention it's Helps from Helps Blatt Regina the colorway is Candy Corner and the stripes are two different from her also Helps Blatt Regina but they are from the advent calendar and I forgot to talk about my bag with the puffins on them. This is my sock bag. My sock bag that I also saw with the snaps on them. And a little ring to put, put different uh, stitch markers. The the pattern uh, of the socks is this regular vanilla, it's just uh, knitting stitches. This bag is a straw string, I forgot to show you about that one. So like also a little bit of patchwork because it has different materials. But I really like this one, this model. Okay, that was a, lo a lot of rambling about um, my my uh, works in progress uh, what I have been knitting. oops there was a telephone um, call from my oldest son in Stockholm he's fine anyway now I would like to talk to you a little bit about <clears throat> uh, what I did when I was in Stockholm last week I visited Sio Kantvex Festivalen which means approximately um, saw and crafting festival and there are um, vendors um, that have materials, m vendors with sewing machines, vendors with yarn, vendors with books, vendors with uh, different things and um, I'm very interested in uh, traditional Nordic and Scandinavian knitting so that's why I decided to to visit and I actually bought a two-day ticket so on Friday I went there all by myself and I had time to walk around and look at the different booths by myself and decide what I wanted to buy. And the second day I went with my daughter and my goddaughter and a friend. And uh, we didn't stay for that long on that day and therefore it was good that I had been able to go on Friday as well. Um, I bought some wool uh, and I also went to a workshop and I bought a couple of books and I wanted to to talk to you first about the workshop that I um, took part in it was about uh, knitting color work and um, cutting it in Scandinavia we we, we knit a lot with uh, rustic yarn and we um, we knit bodies and arms and then we <laughs> we might um, um, cut the armholes and put the sleeves in or maybe to make an opening here we might uh, knit and a stick and and cut it or if we make a jacket we also knit a stick and cut it and i have done it a couple of times but you can always learn more and i was very interested in how the technique when you when you make a stick and you actually crochet up the whole way and then knit how, how that works. And I went with, to a workshop with a lady called Cicel Griandal. She is also Cicel Griandal at Instagram. And it was a really nice little workshop, about an hour, and she showed us um, how this goes. And um, I will try to insert a couple of pictures uh, about what she showed us um, and also she she got she gave us tips about how to make the border here in the front and uh, how you put in the buttons in a good way so that you get the, the right um, in the right get them in the right spot I mean how far away from one another they're supposed to sit that was really nice and then I had said to myself, no, you don't need any wool. Mm -mm. 
I, I think I talked to you about this last week also. I, I have so much in my stash. But I just couldn't resist at Svensk Hemslöjd, which is the Swedish handcrafting society. They had this, these goodies, these wonderful skeins of Ulgon Extra, which is 100% wool and it's 200 meters per 100 grams. It's made out of Gotlands Ull, so Got Gotland wool, I think you call it. And also a little bit of Falkland Merino is in it, but it's spun in Gjellholz Ullspinneri. Uh, and uh, I, I, I just couldn't resist this color. <laughs> Do you see the re re resemblance? I kind of like blue. And um, so it's from the Swedish Craft Association. And I, with the wool, I also got um, a pattern. It's no picture. It's just a, a drawing. You start up here with a few stitches and then you go, you increase the whole way and then there's one of those wavy edges here. But I'm really curious about that and I think it's going to be a really quick knit because it's knitted on uh, um, um, needles number four and um, it takes about 100 grams. No, 200 grams. No, it's actually, no, sorry. With this yarn, that is when you have a, a, a thin yarn. With this yarn, it is, um, it's knitted with um, needles number seven and it takes 200 grams. That's why I bought 200 grams. I was a little bit confused there. To be continued as soon as possible. So I was happy to find the Zing knitting needles. And I actually bought five. Oh, did I go five? These ones I'm using already. Uh, double pointed. 225, 275, 325, and 375, and 2.5. Those um, sizes, 225, 275, Point 0.25 and point 0.75 are really hard to find here in Vienna. So when I saw them, I decided, no, I'm going to get them. And I really think they're so cute with their different colors. So I was glad to find them. They're from Knit Pro. Knit Pro things. I don't know. They're 15 centimeters. And I am not very good in converting them into American numbers because we are millimeter metric people here in Europe. That was the Sing knitting needles. <clears throat> and as I told you about the Marius pattern, which is Nor Norwegian, I also got a Norwegian um, rule booklet called Selbu Strik. Votter, vanter, socker, strømper, lur og skjerf which means mittens, uh, hang, uh, and socks, and hats, and shawls. And it looks like this. And Selbu is a part of Norway, as far as I understand, and they are very well known for their beautiful white and black, um, or at least uh, color work mittens, and socks, and so on. And this uh, little booklet has very many different um, patterns. For example, here you can see some patterns, interesting patterns. I didn't, I didn't buy them just this uh, little book, just because of the uh, mitten, mitten or or sock patterns. Um, it was more because of the color work patterns. I think it, it's very nice to be inspired by those different, here you can see, long socks, for example. 
and they are made out of a very nice yarn called Valma, which is a Norwegian company that makes very nice yarns all these. But I bought it more for inspiration than for the knitting, knitting patterns, but also of course to have a um, mitten, like a mitten um, pattern that you could use for any any color work pattern. I am not going to make these ones. <laughs> That's just at the moment too complicated for me. I'm good with mittens. And I also like the thought of they also have a little bit of the history here is a um, um, when they got married they made those uh, mittens to wear to their wedding day and they write here a little bit about the history which I think is really interesting and the tradition of silver here let's just talk a little bit about the tradition of silver so that's going to be really interesting um, to read. They even have a song here at the back. En selve vått, en selve vått, det er en vått med tommeltott, tommeltott. I svart og hvitt og rødt og blått, det er en ekte selve vått. En selve vått med tommeltott gir varm og innfrysen skrått. Åh, oh, I usually understand. <laughs> Norwegian, and I mainly understood what that said. Anyway, then um, I, uh, at the stand where I got the wool, they also had a lot of books and they had a really nice um, sale. And I decided to get a couple of books that I've been looking at. Uh, they were only about 10 euros for three books. So I got two books for me and one for my friend who has uh, met on Saturday. One is about um, embroidery on, li on linen. And the book has beautiful patterns like this one, for example. And this is a little, a little purse. And black and white ones. And they also talk a little bit about uh, traditions and history about those kind of patterns and what you need to embroider on linen. Yeah, it's it's a very nice book. It's by Monika Hallian and it's uh, from Hemsluden's Verlag. Hemsluden is the Swedish Crafting Association. And they all the other book that I kept for me myself is about it's by Maria Gullberg. It's about crocheting. This is a crocheted bag, for example. And they have, for example, also hats, crocheted hats. And of course the granny squares. Pot holders. This is also a little bit for inspiration, maybe to try out. I have some um, cotton yarn, uh, cotton yarns in my stash. Maybe I will try that. Use some of my leftovers. And uh, there is a pattern here because. <laughs> Uh, there is another booklet on embroidery, which also fascinated me. It's called Botten Summer. I don't know what Botten Summer are in are in uh, in English, but it's also like a a book for beginners. But it's beautiful things. And this one. They're very inspirational and um, 
As I told you, I've given myself a little bit of a challenge to start to embroider. Look at this one. You can also get some inspiration from knitting when you look at those embroideries, I think. And the last but not least, um, also from Hemsleda, from the Crafting Association, a book about shibori. I think I forgot to tell you that this book was by Karina Olsson. And this book is by Eva Davidson. As far as I know, they, they're only published in Swedish. And I've been curious about shibori for a long time. So I'm going to read a little bit about it and see how it works and what you can do. Very cute. And lichens. Clothes, wearing glitter. Yeah, Shibori by Eva Davidson. That was what I got on the fair. Now to my last point on the schedule, which is the present from my Fibershare friend. I took part in Fibershare this uh, month, and the Fibershare is a it's an IG, as an, an Instagram um, event, where you get two partners. You get one partner, you pay an amount of $8, I think it was. And um, when, you, when you enter, and you get one partner to send a gift for, and one partner that sends you a gift, so you receive one present or a box. And um, the, the main thing about it is to share wool yarn depending on if you like knitting crocheting spinning and so on so I entered in the knitting team and I have I had to send my friend in the US Marcia I had to send at least 200 grams of, of uh, yarn and if you want to you can put in more but you cannot put in less than 200 uh, grams of yarn and then, of course, you want to to gift your friend, your new friend, with some little goodies. And a lot of people put in candy or maybe some knitting accessories. And um, I will not tell you what I sent Marcia because she hasn't received her package yet. But I will show you what I got from my uh, fiber share partner in Germany. She sent me a beautiful sock yarn from a company called oh, Ginger Twist Studio, an English um, company, and it's out of, um, it's 300 meters, 100 gram, and it's alpaca, 60%, and it's British Blue Face Leicester, 25%, and Lincoln Long Wool, 15%. Needs to be hand washed, that's okay with me. And can you imagine that she kind of found out what my favorite colors are? I think so, huh? Ginger Twist Studio. And she said, uh, because I have challenged myself to make 12 pairs of socks this year, this was to encourage my, um, my challenge for myself, for my goal for myself. And other than that, she sent me gorgeous, gorgeous organic native Shetland wool called Uradale, from Uradale, Uradale yarns. And it is, has 173 meters on 50 grams, jumper weight, in four beautiful colors. And I don't really know yet what I'm going to do with this, but it might go into um, a shawl or uh, a tube shawl. It, it, it will be color work for sure, I know that. The colors are called Sea Pink. It's beautiful. 
do here. Sun do here. Forget me not. And self heal heat. And she was also very generous. She put in some goodies for me. As she lives close to Basel, she enclosed Basel Lekeli, which is the typical cookie from the region. Here in, um, we have something a little bit um, closer to this. It's called Lebkuchen. We also have it here sometimes in, in Austria, and they also have it in Germany, I know. I haven't opened that yet. I'm going to share that with my boys. And then, this one we have opened already. <laughs> she shared with me some chocolate. She knows I like chocolate. Thank you. This one is not opened yet. And then she sent me beautiful stitch markers that her friend makes. And they are out of wood, wooden beads. Aren't they cute? I love them. And a ribbon that says made with love that I could put into my garments. And a card, of course. Thank you so much. That was great. Last but not least, I'm going to talk about my embroidery challenge. I want to embroider I, I have embroidered before uh, but I really long to make uh, some embroidery and before Christmas I went to my friend's um, store in Stockholm which is called Brodera Mera and my friend is called Helena Eriksson and she has published this beautiful book Brodera Mera with fantastic um, fantastic patterns for embroidery and um, I am going to make this wonderful piece and as you can see it's a Christmas piece. It has the Lucias which are very important for us Swedish people and it has the candles and the little Santa Clauses and a Christmas tree with, with presents under it. And so I got the kit for this, and I have been thinking of starting it since Christmas or since December, but I haven't got around. So now I'm challenging myself by telling you this. Now I have to start, and I'm telling you this. And yeah, this is the pattern here. And um, yeah. We'll see what happens. There are all the wonderful colors and the material that I need for it. And Brodera Mira. Well, it's mirrored. I will put it in the down bar for you to read. So that was it for this time from me, from Vienna. I hope you enjoyed my little rambling about knitting and embroidering and my fair and my friends. And I hope to see you again in two weeks. Take care until then. See you. Bye bye from here.